no, too much wind. Oh, oh, bugger. Yeah, that's all right. Kia ora boys and girls, I'm Celestial Serpent and I'm here with the lovely Richard Holmes who is a Sanskrit mantra teacher, is that right? That's right. That's right. And uh, that, that's, that's one thing you can call me. That's one, that's one identity that, 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 yes. that might, might fit. So today I've got, got Richard here talking a little about spiritualism and his journey. So I don't know if I could should begin with a question or, or, or if you just want to want to go into well, look. Actually, one one interesting um, place to start with is uh, is identity, because you you've been asking me, you know, what what should you call me, <laughs> and, um, and and it's and it's interesting, you know, that you've you've got your um, that you've got your uh, um, your artistic name of spiritual servant. Uh, oh, sorry, spiritual servant. Celestial servant. Cel celestial servant, <laughs> and. Um, and it's it's interesting, see, because you know, when, whenever you ask what your identity is or, or what you call yourself, you know, that brings up all all these different uh, questions and different ways that you can be regarded, and, and you know, different different ways people would describe you. And, and see, what, one of the um, one of the questions is is what what your even what your name is, because um, in my initiation um, and, and and you know, part of part of my identity. You know the spiritual name given to me is is Ramachandra, and um, and you know that's that's another um, area too of is is you know what what is your name even, and and you know what what does a name mean anyway, um, mm. and and when I was in Hawaii a, a few years ago, I'd always been really reluctant to, to take a spiritual name. All, all the other um, students that I'm studying with have, you know, got all these different different names, Gayatri, you know, all sorts of other things. And I thought, oh, don't give me a name. I don't want to have a bad one. don't want to have a bad one. I don't want to have something that I'm, I'm not very happy with. Yeah. And, um, and um, so, so when I'm when I'm with the with the other students, which is you know quite quite rare because they're they're all on the other side of the world, um, they they call me Ramachandra. But anyway, we were in we were in Hawaii, and um, and it was the nearest that the um, that the gurus had ever got to New Zealand. And I thought, okay, okay, Hawaii. This is this is the feeling. I should be there, and um, and went there. And it happened to be the. I reckon it was about the 40th day of a of a Ganapati discipline, and I and suddenly I find myself in Hawaii, and I am with the most um, beautiful soul, um, and um, talking talking to her, she she said, she said, why don't you ask Mother for a name, and um, and I thought, ah, oh, I'm I'm not really into this whole name thing, you know, maybe maybe what's what's you know, because you never know if you might, might get a bad one. <laughs> and she said, she and she said in the most soothing and lo loving tone, and um, and uh, you know, she said, don't, Richard, don't worry, you're you're not going to get a bad a bad one. Nobody gets a bad one. And I thought, well, I guess it is quite a flaw, you know, having this this much doubt in someone I've spent a lot of a lot of money and, and traveling time to see. You know, this 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 would be pretty weird if I didn't actually have any trust in her ability to give a good name. True. So, so I, I spent the time, um, and 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 I thought, okay, I'll I'll ask her. I'll ask her. You know, you 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 feel right, and um, and she gave me this name, Ramachandra, and I thought, yeah, actually, I like that. And it even fitted in with a, a dream I'd had, um, where I'd, where I'd asked, I think I'd asked, or somebody had told me, or I oh, know that's right. In the dream, I had told my name to somebody or other, and um, and it was I remember it was a long name. When I woke up, I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. And I thought, ah, oh. and she had given me this long name, Ramachandra. And uh, when I when I, um, you know, we had a little session where I just asked her what what you know if she wanted to give me a spiritual name, and she said, yes, your name is Ramachandra. And I thought, wow, that's, that sounds really nice. And so everyone called me Ramachandra from then on. But it was funny. It was to me. This was one of the many um, steps on the spiritual journey where you have a doubt that anything good will come of making this extra step. Mm. You know that there's hesitation and 
and or what say this is a disaster or what say blah 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 and you think but you've come this way and, yeah. and coming this way is based on a whole lot of faith or what say it's a complete waste of time what say it's a complete waste of money and funny coming all that way you've still got this extra bit of doubt but the funny thing was and, and to me this, this shows the power of um the power of energy consciousness whatever you know the divine presence that just that i was pretty adamant that i didn't want to get a name from 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 somebody and yet spending time with this you know, beautiful soul that the, all my um reluctance was dispelled all my doubts were yeah. dispelled by that conversation and when when my all my doubts were dispelled then the perfect one came through and i remember just walking out of there talking to one of the um, uh, one of the I guess more senior people there and and, and, he, and I said hey I got a new name he said oh what is it and I said Ramachandra he said Ramachandra he said that's a good one that's a good one <laughs> that's, that's a good one wow <laughs> but we had a then we had a laugh about all sorts of other things but um, but it was it was interesting and to, and to me it's very um, very um, you know, it very, very much ties in with a lot of things in life where there's all sorts of things that you want to do and say you have some hesitation or, you know, like we could we could become a little bit like Hamlet, that we've got something to do and we get so bogged down in our, you know, our doubts, etc. Yeah. or, you know, throwing all sorts of ideas around. You think, you know, there's often a really good way forward. We just need to go for it and grab it and give it some faith yeah, you know, and Take that's and that's going to be infinitely better than oh, but what about this? What about that? Oh, no, no, I won't. Yeah, I won't do anything. I'll just mull over it for the next twenty years. Yeah, it's like there, there, there's a, a million reasons why you couldn't do something, but but what what are those? You know, what you you got to go behind that and be like, why is my mind so attached to not changing? You know, what what's yes. what's or, or, the source? Or where's all this doubt coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. What, what is it? And and is it the fact that I just don't want to make a decision? I'm not brave enough etc and and to me this is this is where um this is where you know i i um really um uh you know i'm, I'm a person who's quite skeptical at, at um at heart i'm a very skeptical person i um you know just don't say into things and know next to nothing about them and give them a lot of credibility but um certainly the mantra practices which was something i was initially convinced were abs an absolute waste of time i just knew i knew in my in my mind of thinking that uh, not in my heart of hearts but just just my mind of conception yeah yeah that, that this was a this was something that was a complete a complete not a waste of time and um and just to give you a bit of history um that it was um I remember one one guy came to our flat ages ago, years and years and years, forever ago, and said he just got into chanting. I thought, oh my goodness, what a colossal waste what a of time! What a, what a deluded guy, you know? <laughs> like no, I mean it's patently obvious, you know, to anyone who can make all sorts of assumptions about life that that, that this can do nothing. And 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 it was. And it, I think it's funny when you, I, and it's, sometimes it's a good experience whenever you say something like that, when you say something that's, and I, did, I didn't say that to him, I don't think. You know, I just remember saying that after, after he'd left, you know, what a waste of time. And it's, sometimes when you say, make a statement that's completely wrong, you know that somewhere in the universe something is building to show you exactly yeah. how, how wrong you were. Yeah. So to, to me, it's, it's great to say things, because... Because one way or another, you're going to be sh you're going to be shown up to be really right or really wrong. Yeah. And um, and and so later, and this this had happened before, and, and this has certainly happened since. Um, um, later, a, a really good and close friend came to me, and 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 I knew he was, and you know, we were honestly, we were both into mystical things, but to me, you know, just repeating some some phrase or other was just you know a colossal waste of time. And he, and he said to me, wow, he said he's really got into some amazing stuff. And um, I thought, okay, let me know all about it. You know, this is, this is great. He said, you know, he's got really amazing things happening. I said, well, I've, I've got to know about this. He said, what are you doing? And he said, he's, uh, 
You see, what was pretty secret is they can't tell me, but after I, after I begged and pleaded, and, um, he said, well, what I do is I light a piece of incense, I offer a flower, and I repeat a mantra 108 times. And I thought, you've got to be kidding. This is, this is just, what? This is crazy talk. But, and, and here was I suddenly in this dilemma where something that I had a lot of faith, you know, was, was absolute garbage. But also, here's my friend who I trust implicitly, and he's telling me that it isn't. So what I've realized very quickly, you know, and after asking more about it, and, and, and him telling me what was happening inside his body, I thought, well, look, I've got to give this, I've got to give this a shot. But I need to read up a lot more about it, because yeah. he said he was in a secret tradition, and he can't, blah, 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 he can't give away the information or or his mantra or anything like that and he didn't I don't think he really knew too many other ones and 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 um, there was a certain amount of secrecy involved in there so I started looking all over the place and a friend mentioned a book and blah 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 um, one thing led to another and um, and 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 I started doing some reading and research like I usually do and um, and I found out this is a pretty you know, this this sounds like a pretty interesting sphere, and it, it keyed in with some stuff I'd been interested in anyway. Like I'd asked a friend, you know, who was this, who was this pic image of on her wall, and she said Carly, and I thought, wow, what a what a way out and somehow intriguing image. You know, I was really drawn to it, and one thing led to another, and I started doing, started finding out how these practices worked. You know, from just from books and CDs. I thought, all right, I'm going to do one, and I did one, and it blew my mind. And 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 it's funny. It started with this has got to be a crop of you know what, and isn't isn't it amazing that just some things, and, and I think it's this is this is you know this is key parts of our path is we need to destroy the ignorance and all the assumptions that we've been making about how life works, which are completely false, you know, each one of them needs to be dismantled or destroyed. Mm. And, and it's actually somewhat, um, I think it's somewhat painful or um, challenging, you know, to just, just to, re to, to introduce a new idea very quickly where there had been an old certainty, mm. suddenly your certainty crumbles and oh my God, well, if, if that's true, then, Holy crap! What else is you know? What else is what else is possible? What other delusions have I been you know laboring under? And um, you know, and it, but it, it also makes life very exciting because suddenly you know what was you know pretty you know limited you know view of life suddenly uh, you know this new vista opens up and you know oh my god there are all these possibilities and of course you could go a little cuckoo for a while just you know g going over all these possibilities and wondering how easy they are and of course you know so you know most of them are, are, are not super easy um but um but it, it was you know suddenly a very 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 exciting time and i just stormed into this whole area um, and and around the same time i actually realized i needed to quit my job and give myself a break because i'd be just been under a lot of stress for um for a few years and and um, and things just exploded in a different direction in my life, and it was it was really, 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 really good. And um, and you know the the thing that I found was spiritual thrills, like we were talking you know before about you know just um, you know it, it's be, it's really nice if you can stop your life from you know being too you know monotonous or you know too much the same. You really need to keep some passion in there, some. Something along those lines, and I tell you what, you know, life was was really, really um, intense um, after I started in, in there because I, I guess I started in the, the deep end. I started in, in an area which I think there were, you know, slight warnings about, etc. And um, and 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 I remember having, you know, realizing, wow, you know, after a while, after doing this for a while, wow. You know, you can have these wonderful thrills, and actually, your consciousness can change. You know, I, I was really in it for the excitement. I, I just wanted to do something really exciting, because I'd been he hearing about all this metaphysical stuff for ages, and I hadn't really seen anything. 
and um, well, not much, little bits. I, I'd seen various things, but nothing that I could really um, latch onto in, in a big yeah. way. And um, and this was the first time when you know, any time you wanted, you could connect to something pretty powerful. In fact, you know, pretty devastatingly powerful, and. You couldn't guarantee that it was going to be devastatingly anything, but you, you just knew that there was a ton of power there, and you can connect to this um, every day. And and I could see my life changing. I could see, I could see that, you know, that I was getting lighter, and 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 that you know, I that I was changing. That stuff, I was getting cleaned out. Shedding skins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I thought, oh my, who you were. my God. <laughs> So not only can can life be thrilling by doing this practice, but you can change for the better. Who would have thought that? I mean, this was not what I got got into it for, and I just yeah. thought, oh my god, just a second. If you can change for the better, you know what else can you change? Yeah. What else can you change? And and to me, this this was the most valuable thing, and this this is why I take take some time, you know, every week to. Um, do a little teaching slot in town, you know, for, for anyone who's interested, and, and it's, it's a little bit way out, and, and, and it's, um, and of course, and this is another crazy thing, is the numbers of people who come along varies with, with the particular energy that I'm focusing on. If it's, if it's, if I'm focusing on a, a crowd-pleasing energy, you know, the, the times I've been doing that, there's a lot of people in there. Yeah. But, you know, you realise actually what and you can you, you realize with you know that with these energies in place or with with any you know good energy in place you can ask and you'll find that a lot of what you ask for start you know starts to transpire and you know what sort of people do you want to come along etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean that that's that's a different topic but um you know i i give the time because i realize that there really are a lot of people out there who would similarly be blown away if they realize that you know that this part of their life that's holding them back, you can really get to work on it, and it doesn't need to be difficult. In fact, some of it can almost be, um, you know, just something that happens by itself with no confrontation or anything like that. Except the only thing you've got to give up is a bit of time. And of course, what is what I? This is what I've come to believe is the most valuable thing in the world is time. Mm -hmm. You know. People can throw 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 out some dollars in front of you. Of course, time and money seem to be related. You know, money takes time to accumulate. But you know, if, if you if you have to offer some of your time, that's a pretty big sacrifice. Yeah, you never get that back. You can get get most things back, tangible things. But well, that it you know it's it's. I think it's it's not an easy one to give up. Yeah, we we don't give up time easily, and and you know you've got to be really devoted to something to give up time, uh, or or to fit it in. And of course, you know a lot of people have got um, blocks in you know their ability to devote regular time to something. Yeah, a bit of a discipline one there. That's right, and so that that's a, that's an area of the personality. And of course, if you want to change it, there's a mantra to work on that, and then you can make make time more easily. And do you think with mantras, it's important to be practicing it regularly just to to see results? Um. I, I, I definitely do. Um, I, I, I would say um, some mantra practices are a lot like homeopathy. It's really going to work if you, you know, just a, a few drops are, are going to work, yeah. but you've got to take it. Every, you know, like well, so I've, I've heard with the homeopathy, you know, if you take a couple of drops, you know, like twice a day, you know, it can really, really make a good effect, but maybe that's a, that's a thing you've got to do regularly. Um, with this one, um, what I've noticed is, you, it's if you want to make a change in your life, especially in some area of your personality that's holding you back, you've got to bring in something regularly. You can't, you can't just say, "I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spend you know, four hours one day. I'm just gonna knock this whole thing over." <laughs> yeah. You know, it's four hours. Is the thing is, you, 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 I don't think that person's really gonna make that much of a connection. Well, it has to be enjoyable as well, doesn't it? You have to really be in, in the moment while you're doing it. Um, I think it's, 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 to me, it's, you know, making, making change takes time. You know, doing, yeah, doing anything great. worthwhile takes time. You know, you're not, you're gonna, not, not gonna make and you know, complete a business in four hours. Yeah. Um, 
and, and of course it depends you know how much obstacle we're talking about you know if it's a large part of your personality which is you know you know got lifetimes worth of molding there it's going to take a lot of chipping away to dis dismantle you know a hammering away um and, and to me you know if a, if a person can take that time every day and, and look if they might drop out every every once in a while but um um, you know, if they can make that regular time, you can really knock this over. And, and a person can make it um, relaxing, they can make it fun, they could do it outside, they could, you know, um, do it, you know, maybe uh, in, in the back seat of a, a car or something like that. Driver's seat is probably too much distraction because um, there are certain restrictions on it. And, and I guess that's where I should, I should say, um, you know, how, how these things work is... Um, is, is really that the whole practice is about is about connecting with energy and and you know as, as we often hear all of life is energy all of life is consciousness consciousness and energy you know like ev everywhere um, yeah. you know some some pretty good energy here today um, but um, you know if all of life is energy then then you know if we find any obstacles in our life then all we need to do is apply the right energy. And I've seen it time and time again. I'm just totally convinced of it. You know, you don't need to worry about the normal things people would do. Some things you're only going to change with some really special, you know, something really, really special. Some, almost some magic, some, you know, some, some, um, some futuristic technology. Well, to me, this is the futuristic technology. It's stuff that people do not understand today. I, I would say that I'm, I would only understand a certain part of it. I, I understand the ways it appears to work. Do I understand the whole lot of it? No, I don't. But, no, no. but what I do understand is that if a person sets out to connect to this particular energy, because say, say if they you know, have a uh, lack of discipline uh, in their life and they notice that it's this lack of discipline that's really holding them back, that if they sit down with this particular mantra to give them discipline and all the health benefits that go with that too you know it's 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 a hot, it's an energy which is going to change a lot in their life um, that if they just sit down five minutes a day five or ten um, and just just spend that time really focusing on on connecting to that energy bring that into their being they just do that regularly they're gonna notice over time that things are gonna change and that also, do, doesn't matter what you're doing, your ability to tune into energy mm -hmm. is going to increase. Whereas, you know, it doesn't matter if you didn't know anything about it before. If you just focus on it, and that's your intention, it's going to happen. And years down the track, you're going to think, well, you know, wow, did I really not know how to tune into these things before? You know, so, so it, it's a real skill, but it's a way that we can work on stuff that we wouldn't otherwise know how to deal with and, mm. and, it, and it can be any energy like um, as diverse as you know things in the personality confidence you know somebody who's um, really painfully shy that's just an energy in the personality it can be worked on mm -hmm. you know there's there's no reason why you can't be confident if you're willing to put the time in um, uh, there are other ones, sensitivity, you know, if, if, if too many people tell you you're an insensitive so-and-so, you think, oh my goodness, you know, I can't deal with this, this is, this is wrecking, blah, blah, or this is a real obstacle to these things, and it will be, all of these will, you know, you can put time into that. Uh, love, love and beauty, you know, that's, that's another one. Man, who wouldn't want more of that? Well, so, so, sometimes too much could be an obstacle, depending on what else is going on in your personality, but... Yeah, it's another one you can tune into. Beauty is just an energy. There's no reason, you know, why if enough of it comes in, you know, um, that our life might not uh, change it. And I've seen it with, with all of these. Um, yeah, uh, there's um, there's uh, friendship, you know, the the friendliness and and the um, uh, how how you come across to other people. Do you come across as a friendly person or do you come across as a bit gruff a lot of people notice that you know when when they're talking to other people or when they're having conversations you know and you notice this when when you when there's a, a disagreement between two people 
why did you, why did you, you know, say that so roughly to her? I didn't say it roughly. I was, I was, I was saying it quite nicely. And you, and you realise whenever there's a conversation like that, somebody's perception yeah. of what's going on is a little bit out of kilter with reality. And what's going on there? You know, somebody needs a bit of help. Something needs to change there for everything to go to the right place it needs to be for harmony because we should come across exactly as we're meaning to come across we shouldn't sound we shouldn't sound angry when we're not angry and and um, it's good to you know meditate on what's going on there but if that's a constant case and if we've had this feedback from other people you know often we've got something to work on there yeah so there's all these things in our personality but there's also you know what um, why do things like success uh, income, money is just an energy. We we always hear that, but of course, you know, people wonder, well, how on earth can I attract more? And man, just <laughs> just grind away on the money mantra, and it's go- things are gonna change. And and you've seen that in your life from I, practicing I, the money mantra. Yeah, or? I know, I, I I definitely have. I, I probably haven't done enough of it recently, and and which is not to say that you know I'm, I'm destitute, but you notice that that. Um, there's a level of income that your personality can attain and it's going to be different for different people. We, we seem to come into this life with, with a different, each with a different setup. It, it might appear to be molded by our family or our upbringing or certain events in life or different things, but it doesn't matter. That's, yeah. that's the key thing to me is it doesn't matter. We've got the choice now. What are we going to do about it? Is it a problem? Is it a problem or is it not a problem? If it's not a problem, you don't need to worry about it. You don't, don't it's not broken, don't affect you. That's right. Exa- exactly <laughs> right. There's, there's all these cool things to do, but if it's not a priority, you know, it, it, it's up to you. But spend your time on something which is holding you back or, you know, you feel is, is, is going to be important. Um, and, and um, you know, to me, I've... I mean, because I, I know money is a, is a difficulty for a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this world that should be should be using this one. Um, but it's, um, it, it's, it's a lovely, relaxing mantra. Even a lady was saying recently, oh, it sounds so nice. Uh, it's, Hasika la i ai la hreem, hasika la i ai la hreem. That's, that's the mantra. It just sounds like a song. And, and of course, it's only one of, I'm sure, very many that can um, work on this energy in slightly different ways in your life. Um, and the interesting thing that I noticed about it was that when I f- when I'd quit my job, like I told you, and when I found mantras, it was because I was having um, I was just noticing my spine was really playing up at work. Sitting down was um, quite uncomfortable. I'd get a really stiff back after a while. And I noticed when I'd done this mantra for a while that I noticed, wow! Uh, and one day in particular, when I when I even took it to work. And, you know, we're just doing it all day at work. By the time, you know, I thought, wow, I am sitting so comfortably. Man, what's going on? And I remember getting up, getting up to go for a walk and standing up and thinking, man, I have never felt so relaxed in this body in my life. And I remember sailing off to lunch. <laughs> sailing Sail- off. Sailing off. Gliding and, through and you, the air. That's right, just drifting down the street. <laughs> And, and I met a friend for lunch that day, and I usually buy lunch for him, and he bought lunch for me that day, and I thought, well, that's, is, is that significant? You know, nice coincidence. And what I, what I realized was that, that, um, that wrapped up in this energy of money is, is the energy of support. That, that you know, the, like one of the key things about money is it, is it gives us support. You know, when we need something, here it goes, it'll, it'll handle that for you. Yeah. And with the absence of it, then suddenly some of the things that we need to support us, you know, like, you know, could, in a very basic sense, you know, food, shelter, etc. cetera, um, you know, they, they might be, um, you know, harder to access or they might be restricted. You know, or just some of the things we do in life, we're not getting the support to do them. And, and I was really surprised to find after a while that um, that just you know reciting the mantra and really focusing on you know th- this is one of the ways that I do it it's, it's not the way everyone does it but I just imagine way above me that energy is is radiating down and I'm I'm filling up on it and um, and just just tuning into it and um, and what I noticed after a while was that 
um, I could feel something buzzing right at the bottom of my torso. Oh, yeah. And I thought, my goodness, I think this is my base chakra. That's where they say it is. It's like, you know, right down the bottom of your torso, right you know, somewhere in the middle there. And I just feel it going bzz, bzz, like that. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, this is really way out. And, and so I, I've, I've done three 40-day practices of that where I've done it for I don't know once in the morning or once in the morning once in the evening and all three times it's manifested um, yes exactly a lot something along the lines of what I've been asking for you know beyond what I could have expected and then when you're doing something 40 days you lose any expectations after a while you just know I need to do it you know, and, and the right thing's going to turn up and even doing it not for 40 days um, you can just see after a while that you know, that, that opportunity for income just starts to come to you. Anything that you're doing uh, for income, it'll just, you can feel it. It's working well. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's coming along fine. It's no problem. And then if you get lazy and stop it, which I've, which I've done, uh, one of the 40-day ones that I haven't, or one of the ongoing ones that I've just, just um, uh, been too lazy to keep going, you notice, oh, the energy is, you know, after, it's usually about two days you can really feel things are starting to slip and, and it's dropping away because when, when you're collecting that, mon that, that energy, it's, and I wouldn't classify it as mantra energy, it's just en special energy that you're collecting, energy that works in a particular well, way. You're creating at the same sense, right? Uh, to me, you're, you're creating a, a new, you're definitely creating a new path in life for yourself. I guess it would be a Yeah, you're, you're channeling. Channel. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's out there, it's all around. You know, other yeah. people are working with it. Some, something in our, and, and you know, I'll, I'll get creative here. Something, maybe something in our, we've, we've say, we've got this big tra um, receiver dish on top of ourselves. Yeah, I like that. And it's funny, you know, we've got this sign of receiver dish, and the receiver dish always has this little thing sticking out. Yeah. It's funny, you look at um, Islam, is, is one of its symbols is this crescent with a star out in the front of it. And our big receiver dishes are a crescent shaped thing Curious. with this, and it's all focused on this little thing in front of it there. And this is a big symbol in Hinduism too, and it's always on the top of the head. Is Whoa. a crescent shaped moon, and there's the star. Now, what is that all about? And to me, to me, one, it's highly symbolic, but secondly, there, there is something energetic at the top of your head which receives. All, all I know is that I, I've done practices on that. They really work fantastically. Um, and, and that's why I often focus on the top of my head as, as the um, place where I'm receiving. I'm not saying this needs, needs to be the way it is, but to me, I'll just, my mind will be quieter if I do that. I'll feel better energy if I do it. It just works better for me. But it's, it's funny to me, anything that you see in these really esoteric subjects, you also look in real life and you'll often see them, you know, that, that this metaphor, seeming metaphor here, is represented in real life, like the satellite dish. And when, yeah. I, when I saw that with the satellite dish, I thought, this is weird and cool. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's a very specific reason why satellite dishes take the form they yeah. do and it's probably again based on that geometry well look, I, I reckon it's something along the lines of what we were discussing before where yeah. any any energy or any energetic reality which is really quite important will take will actually manifest in different ways you know either in nature uh, where we have all these beautiful flowers with mm. these wonderful shapes and petals and everything like that um, or, you know, like even the, the satellite dishes after a while, and of course the satellite dish, you know, took, you know, millions of years to turn up. Um, to me, I just see so many coincidences in words, the way we phrase things, things like that. I yeah. just think that these can't be accidents after a while. Um, but, but anyway, um, just, just back to the money mantra, you know, just um, tuning into that, tuning into that energy. Um, you know, I, I, as I said, I, I, I um, had the experience of, of doing, you know, sets of 40-day disciplines. Just 40 days is a nice thing to do if you want to get something out of it. You might not want to practice it for the rest of, you know, devote and, and um, commit yourself to the rest of your life. But you just think, I would like something to turn up to really help and, and see. And this is, the, this is one of the things I did when I um, quit work. 
and I thought, you know, I'm going to really ex find, find out some wonderful things in life, explore this, uh, this new mantra thing that I've just come across. And I uh, went to India and everything and uh, studied all sorts of things. Then I thought after a while, well, look, I'm getting a bit low on cash. I need a job. You know, wow, I, I really need to work on this. And, um, and so I did a 40-day money um, uh, discipline for, for um, financial abundance. And, um, and, and I just thought, look, I'm not desperate. You know, I'll just, I'll just do it. I'll just tune into this every day. And I think it was 108 repetitions every morning, 108 repetitions every night, because I, I had the spare time, why not? And I had heard that there was an extra benefit if you never skip, if you never skip one. So it doesn't matter how, how late you turn up, you're going to do it, you know? And, yeah. and, and to me, there's, there's a real power in just saying, and sacrificing your comfort and saying, Oh, I can't be bothered. It's a bit late tonight. Oh, I'm feeling a bit tired. You know, I'm a bit unwell. Oh, there's something else going on. I, you know, because because if you do that, you're just going to find too many reasons why not to do it. Oh yes, very, <laughs> very easy to make excuses. Exactly, exactly. And and to me, it also very confronting to um, our personality. You know, where we want to be in a comfort zone, where where you know our discipline has a limit. And um, so I did it for the 40 days. And, and I just thought, well, you know, I'm just going to be relaxed. Uh, and the funny thing is, after the 40 days, I don't know if I had any faith it was going to work at, at the start of it. And, and obviously, um, Puss has got her input into it too. She's got her, her chanting as well. <laughs> yeah. I heard the birds also, also doing their That's sacred right. mantras, <laughs> venerating nature and the Creator with every chirp, every, every noise, oh, resonancy. And, and, and you do see that they fully tune into it, and that, and that Puss here will tune into the energy, and the birds will tune into the energy, and the flowers. I noticed that certain plants, especially, um, they will reflect the um, mantra you're doing. And in fact, I noticed that particularly the yellow flowers there will very much react. I mean, this sounds way out, I think, to anyone who wasn't right into this. But that, that plant will react very strongly to the financial abundance mantras if I'm, if I'm doing them. When I'm yeah. doing them, those flowers are blooming and looking perfect. It's just something about yellow flowers. I guess it's the sort of goldy colour. But anyway, I, I don't know if I had any faith that this much was going to work at the start of the 40 days. By the end of the 40 days, I noticed I just felt relaxed. Um, you know, I, I, I was just going to, in fact, I felt very confident. And I think that's one thing that you can tell about the energy and if the energy is present, is once you've been doing it for a while, you get a confidence that it's, I'm not worried about the situation at all. It's, it's going to sort itself out. And, and of course, there are ways to accelerate it if you, if you, don't, have this, if you don't have that time. Yeah, it's almost that like that confidence attracts. Yes. It attracts at the well, same time. To, to me, that, that confidence, that I think the key things to know is that all of life, and, and, and these, these are things that I very much um, believe to be true, is, and I've, I've heard other very wise people say them, is that every, all of life around you reflects what's going on inside you so if you don't like what's happening around to you or what's happening around you you've got to change something inside don't bother criticizing all these people and, and, and of course you know doing the right thing is part of the energy inside you you know saying the things that need to be said and, and keep and not saying the things that don't need to be said but um, you know this is this is a wonderful opportunity because it means we we're, we're not slaves to fate we're you know, we're not powerless um, in the face of, you know, things which just seem impossible to change. All we need to do is change the energy running inside us. And one way or another, things outside are going to change. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we see it again and again. If, if we can um, have the, uh, the willpower, you know, and, and the strength, you know, to, to get down and change that energy. And it might be a real stuck old energy inside us. Or it might be just something simple, but if we change it, we can see that potentially difficult or even worrying circumstances, they can disappear. Mm. You know, they can really just be, I've, I've, just, I've seen this one too many times where things I've been really worried about, you put your, you know, you attract them the, the energy that you think would be the most fitting one to change this, and suddenly, you know, even that day, everything's changed. Everything's changed. You know, something yeah. amazing has happened. And it's and this is this is the deluding thing at, at uh, initially is 
it seems unrelated. It's a complete coincidence. It's got nothing to do with your thing. No, but it, it couldn't be. It, well, couldn't be. Well, well, this is this is something that I that I would get lost on when I first started doing these these um, mantra practices. Was that you just notice something really great? You know, great things would start happening. You know, down the track, and you think. Wow, you know, life's so good these days. I don't think I need this particular mantra anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, just because, you know, I think I've gone past that, you know, I don't know, that bad stage I was in. And yeah. then you drop the practice. And then you notice, oh, wow, curiously, you know, after a wee while, oh, the, you know, the energy start, seems to be winding down. Life isn't quite as good. And you realize it's life is different when you're flooding yourself with a particular energy. It's mm. going to really color everything around you. And you, you might see it that day, but it'll start manifesting gent at least gently within a few days, and things will start changing. You might not perceive all of it, but if you're perceptive, you will. And of course, if your intention, and your intention is quite important, if your intention is you want it to go into something bigger, you might see nothing manifesting for a while, but maybe just positive signs, positive omens. Yeah. And, and what happened after the, at the end of this this um, forty day uh, money mantra discipline? Ch- trying to keep on track there. Yeah, and it's, yeah. not, and it's nice to have di- all sorts of diversions. Yeah, life life ain't a straight line. That's right, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> um, but I, I had I just I just thought I'm just going to let it work. I've got faith. You know, it's, so many wonderful things that happened out of these. I, I've just got faith, and and I could feel it working. And I noticed. Um, I think it was maybe three weeks later. I just got a call, uh, an email out of the blue, a friend asking me if I wanted to do some um, some work in some area which I wanted to get out of actually. And 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 I thought, well, I don't want to get back into that. And so I don't think so. And anyway, he was and he was persistent. He said, look, you know, I, I said, look, I don't really want a full-time job, and, 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 and I thought to myself, certainly not doing that. I was actually quite reluctant. I, you know, I, I had a bit of a barrier to doing this, and, 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 and I was a bit worried about, you know, just would I know enough to do what he was um, suggesting. And so I initially just, you know, I think I, I can't remember if I ignored it or just said, oh, not really. And, um, and it was funny, and he came back, and, and I think he didn't know anyone else who was free at the time, and he said, look, it's... It's whatever hours you like, and, and, he, and he said it's you know it's a um, you know it's quite a nice situation. And I thought, oh well, what really? It can even be part time. Well, gee, that sounds pretty way out. Well, he said, come on, just just come in and have have a look at it. And I thought, okay, I'll I'll come in and have a look. And anyway, I just turned up <laughs> turned up to have a look, and um, and and so one of the bosses there said, oh, you're the you're the new guy, right? Okay. <laughs> and I thought, oh, am I actually? Am I actually starting? And that, and that was it. I, and I tell you what, this was way out because uh, up to that stage, I never, ever, never, ever had a job without an interview. That, that had never happened before. And I yeah. realized, you know, looking back on it, you know, pretty quickly, that this was, that this was, that there, there were some very strange things happening here. One, Suddenly, I had a, a job without an interview, mm-hmm. no interview process at all. Secondly, I remember stating unequivocally to someone, there are no part-time job development. There are no part-time development jobs. Don't even waste your time thinking about it. They, they just don't exist. Nobody wants someone who's just part-time. Anyway, this was a job without an interview, and they were saying I could work part just half-time if I wanted. And I just thought, this is the most way out thing and I was working with a guy that I'd worked with before and we just worked like a dream together but I noticed it challenged some things with me is I hadn't I hadn't really wanted to do this kind of work before and and I realized that I wasn't I had some fixed attitudes and I didn't you know I, I hadn't realized that um, I hadn't been able to see that this work could be fun and, and it was it was really good fun um, and 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 I noticed I had to overcome some little some previous ways of doing things, um, you know, which which had I would I'd say had soured previous work um, work that I'd done, and I I changed the way I approached certain things. Like c- certainly when I knew I felt I knew I was right, um, in this situation I'd just say it, you know, say what I thought, 
And if the other people who, you know, really held the power at this place weren't interested, then I just thought, oh, well, look, you've had your chance, and I'm just going to be relaxed about it. It's your decision. I know this was, I think this was one of the first jobs that I really got that message, that don't, don't make a nuisance of yourself when you know you're right. Because, you know, there are some things I just know I'm right on. And, and there, were, there was one thing in particular that came up there, and I knew that this was the wrong way to approach it. And, and I mentioned it and, and wasn't, wasn't, you know, people didn't want to hear it. And I thought, well, look, I'll leave it. It's not my, it's not my product, yep. it's not my job. And I've said my piece and man, it bit this guy, <laughs> bit this guy later. And, and he's a lovely guy. And, um, and I thought, well, look, I did the right thing. And, and that, that problem, you know, completely shot over, shot past me. And, um, and, and, you know, that was just maybe something that he needed to learn because I think he went yeah. through a bit of pain later okay. with, with that. Um, and and I, I think, you know, this is, this is the key thing when, especially you're working, working with these wonderful energies which are so supportive and, you know, really, you know, um, expanding our boundaries of what we thought we were or what we thought we could do. Yeah. You know, and it's gently expanding, but definitely expanding. It's the opposite of... This, this idea, people never change, do they? You know, the thing about people, they don't change. You know, and to me, this is the biggest load of nonsense ever. Yeah. It's the worst thing in life. I would say, let's change that a little bit and say, the worst thing in life is people who don't change. Yeah. You know, can you, the, can you think of anything worse than not changing? No, they, they say if you stay the same over the course of a year, it, it might seem like everything's normal, but you're actually digressing because you're not because it's yes. natural to progress and the yeah. only thing the only thing that's constant in life is change you know that's the very nature of time and reality is that everything changes yes. it's got exactly it's, it is the one constant and, and even um, I heard in the ancient Sanskrit because because that's that that's my my big passion um, is is all the Hindu stuff around around the mantras to me the mantras is, is the core of it if I had to let everything go I'd, I'd, I'd just keep the mantras but one of the one of the things that you pick up, you know, just sort of reading and reading and studying, is um, is that the the word for the the universe, um, the world in um, Sanskrit is um, is jagat, and that jagat means um, mo is means movement. That it's mm. something that is constantly moving, and and that uh, that if you're looking for if you're looking for um, you know, a, re a resting place, or even potentially peace. This world is not the the, the uh, this place is not the place where you should be looking for that. Yes. You need to be looking somewhere beyond that to find to bring that peace into this world. Well said. And 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 you know, and it's a lot of the things that we're really looking for. If you dig down, it's funny. Funny, um, I've discovered some of these in my life years ago when I was wondering, you know, like why am I, say, addicted to playing video games and stuff like that? Why are you wonder, wondering about that? And you have a realization, you know, of what what am I looking for? When you ask these questions, you know, amazing things happen, you know, with, with your wonderful subconscious, which can go off and find the answers to these things. And if you're quiet, you know, can start giving you this feedback or, or, or plopping ideas in your head, especially if you spend a bit of quiet time um, yeah. each day. And uh, and it doesn't need to be, you know, lotus posture, you know, doing some, yeah, exactly, some amazing <laughs> mudras and, you know, and, um, you know, in, de in the depths of some temple somewhere. You know, yeah. it just can be really quiet, reflective time where you're allowing, you know, things to be a lot quieter, and you're allowing yourself to maybe just reflect over things mm. and just wonder, so why didn't that work out or what's going on in the situation and just muse over it. And, yeah. and, and, and I mean, you know, to maybe even be a bit polit politically incorrect these days, I think that was one of the benefits of all, the, all these uh, guys from uh, generations past who used to smoke pipes. Because to smoke a pipe is something you actually, you can't really, if you really want to f concentrate on it, you've got to spend some time very, not doing it. Very anything. contemplative, isn't it? 
It's very contemplative. Sitting on the porch in your rocking chair, just mull, mull, mulling over, <laughs> mulling over the day and past experiences. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and you see, and it, and anyone who had that habit, I believe they almost were. Yeah, well, they were given a large incentive, if not forced, to spend a certain amount of time, you know, quietly reflecting. You know, and that's really going to change a person from being busy, 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 yeah. and um, and just or just always talking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, you know, to potentially being you know a bit different because because I actually this this was one of the things bizarrely I um, had a real subconscious urge to get into was pipe smoking and I, I actually I just became you know I was like obsessed with it um, when I when I took a year off work um, years and years and years ago and I know and that's when I noticed this that wow you actually have to be able to spend some time doing nothing just sitting there and that was a real change to me as I thought wow I've never actually spent any time just sitting down and and being. You're spending time with yourself as yeah. well, you know, you spend so much of your energy interacting with this external yes. reality and other yes. people within or, or it. Even, or even books, you know, just, just yeah. you know, like, um, just, just with lots and lots of thought stimulus, you know, lots and lots yeah. of stimulus. And, uh, you know, just to sit, and, and actually that was something that I'd always resisted actually was any quiet time. I know when I was a lot younger, I'd just be very, very restless. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's curious all these things. It's, it's, I think it's quite common. A lot of people struggle to be with themselves mm. because it, it, it brings up all of this, all of their issues. So they're, they're constantly trying to, yes. trying to be with other people and surround themselves with distractions almost. So it's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, well I would say that's true that, um, yeah. that, that, that if, if a person's sitting down, just being quiet and, and maybe just, um, and maybe just gently reflecting on things, if they're not happy doing that, and they and they feel they need to get into a lot of activity to distract themselves, you know, they really need that. Even more reason they need to get down and really think about some of these things. Yeah, it reminds me of the classic kind of experience of meditation for someone who's really busy, and you know, they're, 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 time is money, yes, yes, very yes. busy lifestyles, and they sit to meditate, and it's like, I don't have time to meditate, hmm. and it's like. It's almost just this, 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 this humorous outlook that if you don't have time to meditate and you're not meditating at all, you know, your, your mind isn't switched off and, and, yeah. and you need well, it even more. If, if, if although I'd, I'd definitely say that, um, that people who complain about that, I, I would suspect don't see the benefits or are just not aware at all of the benefits that you get from it. And, and to yeah. give, give you an extreme example, I mean, um, I, 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 and, and to be honest, I'm not a great meditator at the moment. I mean, my, yeah, my, I, I struggled with it for a long time. I was like that at the start mm, that I just, mm. I'd, I'd want results from it. I'd be yes. thinking in this kind of linear fashion that I want to achieve something, but it's actually. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, um, I, I've, I've done various things. Like I've always felt I needed some something extra to help me help me get there. I mean, I, I had really good experiences actually starting just on my own initially. And I mean, so actually with some quite way out experiences, but I um, always felt I wanted something just to help me, um, help me along. And, um, and I remember um, doing um, a wonderful course by a group based in London called the Servants of the Light. And they, they would they would do this male old fashioned male style correspondence. And this was this was ages ago, and 2006 it must have been, and um, and um, they'd send this information through, and you have to read it, and you've got lessons, and they're they're teaching you how to meditate, and um, and I remember um, just after doing it for maybe I don't know, it couldn't have been more than three weeks. That and that I, you know, and, and asked, and, and, and they got, and they specifically got you to ask questions. They said we're doing active meditation. We're not doing passive meditation, which is just where you, you know, you just be quiet and, and forbid thoughts to enter your mind. They said mm -hmm. what what we're doing is we we start with active meditation. So with that one, you um, you'll set a question 
and then you'll just see what comes to mind and then you'll you'll just um, allow all sorts of you keep asking the question and keep allowing things to come to mind and and what I see it is 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 it's training you to talk to your subconscious yeah it seems like a very intuitive practice yeah oh very 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 much so and of course they start with not with questions like um, you know n nothing heavily loaded but just who am I you know I think um, you know I, that was one of them I can't remember the other question and uh, of course you know you're struggling to come come up with answers after a while and really having to plumb the depths and um, and uh, and I remember I just you know, I just feel quite good after after doing these uh, meditation sessions, and, uh, and I think they said just make it, you know, ten minutes or something like that. And I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just sit around for a while afterwards, you know, and just um, just relax. It feels feels quite nice actually. You know, I haven't felt so, you know, relaxed and nice uh, before. And and I remember just I just do their practice, and then I'd let myself. You know, just relax and go blank there. And I remember once just seeing this um, very clear image of looking up at one of the at one of the statues in Egypt, seeing the face so clearly with the clouds in the sky going past, and then thinking, "Wow, that is the most vivid thing I've ever seen in a meditation like it was just you know switching from nothing in particular to a really clear vision and I thought this is unbelievable this is like this is like magic and um, and then and practicing doing their technique within um, within a pr fairly short period of time I was asking some questions that were had been buzzing around in my head and getting some real some answers more and more profound than I would ever be able to get in normal consciousness and and what I realized was that was that you know just when you're still and you um, uh, and you get yourself into the right space and you shut out the external stimuli and that you you you've practiced asking a question and then just getting the letting the answers come to you you know, from where you know wherever the farthest recesses of your mind or whatever you like to call it that you can ask questions about things that are stumping you in real life and then you realize somehow I am more intelligent in this space than I am in real life because in, in normal life well real life what's real life but in normal life I could not get the answer to this. I was, you know, confused as to why this was going on. Um, and when I'm in this state, I'll ask the question, why, why is this going on? And everything comes clearly. I can see it all clearly. And all I need to do is ask. And this just blew me away. And, um, and, and you know, one, unfor one, I would say um, one challenging uh, bit of fallout from this was that you know I asked, well, what's the state of my relationship? Because I'd known that things weren't perfect with uh, my partner at the time, and, and 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 I asked, just lying down in bed, just doing doing the practice that that had been outlined, um, that you you did so many um, breaths. You know to breathe the energy into your body and then you just relaxed and and I just said so what's the state of our relationship and I just never before had all these little things been arrayed in front of me and put together in this perfect perfect um, picture all the pieces had been there but I just couldn't with my limited amount of mind power being able to assemble them and they were assembled over the next couple of minutes and and it made this picture which clearly showed me look you guys you know have been good friends etc 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 but for the following reasons you will never be a good couple together you, you guys aren't meant to be and actually this relationship is not meant to progress any further and I just came out of it thinking, oh my goodness, 
holy moly. I, you know, and, and, um, and it was so clear, you know, oh my goodness, yes, we have to, my goodness, we have to break up, which sounds like complete madness. But, <laughs> which, you know, and, and, and i got to say that that meditation practice suffered because I thought, oh my goodness, man, if this is what it'll do to you, what else is it going to do? You've got to be do? careful what you ask for, eh? Well, <laughs> I, think, I think you need to be ready. And, and the yeah. thing is, I, was, I would say I was quite fearful um, you know, I wasn't prepared for too much change in my life, but man, that year was going to be, whether I wanted it or not, it was going to be a big, you know, blowing everything out of the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, to me, that was, that was my Carly year because just everything changed. You know, um, you know I, I tripped over at work. My, my nice business shirt and the suit got ripped. Um, um, and, and I thought, oh my goodness, what's the meaning of this? And the meaning was no more suits for you, you know, and, and that, and, and the feeling was so clear, I need a break from this, I'm quitting, I'm not going on to the next contract, I'm going to take some time out, and it, it all worked, and it all worked perfectly, because that's something that was actually quite dangerous coming my way, actually missed me, because I, because I took a different path, just an investment opportunity that would have been honestly a disaster i mean these were all you know verging on fraudulent guys and and just because i wasn't going to be in the workforce next year i said look guys you know it sounds sounds good but you know i know you've been recommended but i just can't do this yeah so you, you, know? you followed the signs and it yeah, navigated you through the energy and the energy. consciousness you know just um just pulled me in a different direction and 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 you know i mean it's great thinking back on that because you know it was a real um, it was a really great place to be, but but you know even um, even though the certainly the energy and the consciousness you know through the practices I was doing you know took me wonderful places and of course they were pulling in more energy you know into me than than had ever come in before and and some interesting things popped out of that because of course whatever's happening in you is gonna be reflected outside so you know things are gonna manifest. Yeah. And um, and I and I quickly met the most I think the most amazing what you know I think I I would have to still say the most amazing guru I talked to that I've ever talked to just just through doing a meditative practice you know that was nothing else but just a meditative practice and. And, um, and that was a Maori tohonga, and I spent an afternoon with him just through a strange series of coincidences. I just happened to end up in Auckland in his, in his kitchen, you know, chatting to him. And I thought, this is a busy guy, and he doesn't know me from, you know, Adam. And, 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 and I, I guess I should, I should really get out of here and, and, and give him some peace. And he kept saying to stay there, and I even cancelled my flight back to Wellington, or postponed it, and, oh, yeah. and, um, and made one much later. For some reason, he just wanted to, he was just happy to spend the rest of the afternoon, or he thought it was very appropriate to spend the rest of the afternoon, telling me all the stuff that I, some stuff that I could kind of understand, and other stuff, I thought it was quite clever and was getting tuned in with my meditation, but I realised, I think it was really useful, because I realised that, you know, I just I might have good energy going on, but man, I don't, I don't have a lot of wisdom here. You know, there's a lot that I need to learn and know because this guy is talking about stuff that I'm struggling to keep up with. And he'd talk about one subject, and as, as soon as he was starting to lose me, it would just, just he'd just quietly move on to another <laughs> topic. You know, like, yeah. like you know, very patient um, kindergarten teacher, to, you know, talking to some little kid, and. Um, and, and, and it's, in, it's interesting, one of the things that happened, and I would say that was a real manifestation of the practice I was doing, because I was doing a different med meditation by this time, I'd already broken up with my partner, that, that whatever was manifesting couldn't be stopped. I, I, I was too scared to mention it to her, you know, because I just thought, how do you say this to her? I, you know, this will, this will be crushing and everything. And it was almost like the Edgar Allan Poe story, you know, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it was almost like the walls were shouting this out. I couldn't keep the lid on it, and she realised something was up, you know, within a few days. Yeah. And um, and uh, and I just had to I had to just come clean with it. But because I was doing this 
um, other practice at the same time too, this one where you imagine the top of your head open and all this heavenly energy flooding in, I'd always been a person who just put my foot in my mouth all the time up to that point, and for some reason when we were having all these conversations, you know, every every evening um, when when the you know when the sun was setting on our relationship, I was just saying all the right things. This was something that was a completely foreign experience to me, and just all the right things were being said, and um, and it was amazing. And it was because of all this energy. I was just doing this, I would, while I was talking to her, I was just doing this practice to let all that wonderful energy come through and, it, and just all the right words were coming out and it just yeah. manifested in the right way. But I, I was also doing that practice really heavily when I met this Maori Tauhonga and um, one of the things that manifested when I talked to him was that I was actually quite happy, it was getting towards the end of 2007, I was quite happy with the contract job I had. Um, with ACC, and um, I, I'd not been very, I'd been really unhappy with it when I started there, and I'd been unhappy with certain things, but by the end of it, you know, it was finishing up, everyone was painting it as a big success, and patting me on the back, and all this sort of stuff, and got through all the big hurdles, and you know, I was feeling quite good about myself, and, um, and I got to know everything really well, and everything was suddenly easy now, and um, anyway, he asked me what I did, and I said, oh, well, I've Work for um, work for ACC, you know, on their computer systems there, and um, and he's and um, and he and he said um, he asked me two he asked me two questions. I can't remember the he, he said. I think the first question was so he said so. Tell me, you know what what. What kind of things have you been doing there? Something like that, or tell me what what's something you've done recently there. You know, give me an idea of what sort of, you know, why you like it. And um, I told him about something I'd done recently. You know, which you know was a um, change that somebody asked for at the last minute. And, I, and you know, ACC was a notorious place for taking ages to do things. And I said, oh, you know, with with us and our group, we found a really quick way to do it. We'd done it in no time flat, and everyone was so happy. And, you know, I found, felt really good at the end of it, you know, just making everyone happy. And then he asked me the second question, you know, he had laid the trap, and I don't, still to this day, it's impossible to know how he did it. And, and, and this, I've told other people this, and you realize you're, you're talking to someone who is not a normal person, you know, that you are talking to someone who is, you know, way beyond where you are. You know, that you are outclassed in every respect in front of someone like this. Because he just asked a second question. And I just I just told him, you know, what a good thing I'd, we'd just done recently at, at work. And, you know, how we were trying to make it a more efficient place. And I painted it, you know, as, as, good, as a good place, you know, where, where I was enjoying myself. And so he said, when I told him about this thing I'd done, he said, so was it worth it? And I thought... What do you mean, was it worth it? I just told you something. You know, it, it, it threw me, because I just told him something worthwhile I'd done, done at work, something good, everyone was happy. Yeah. You know, and, and it, you know, it wasn't the slow way of doing things that, you know, this place was kind of a little bit, you know, famous for, infamous for. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, was it worth it? And I thought, and I thought and suddenly I thought back to when they first asked me to do this piece of work. They asked me to change something in the configuration of this thing that was already in production. And I said, you don't need to do that. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see it. It's, it, it, it. Ideally, it would be better, but it's honestly, it's a waste of time. And, and they said, ah... Uh, it's just, we kind of need that for our, you know, it's just the way we agree we do things and, you know, we really need to do it. Yep. And I, I said, but honestly, guys, it is a waste of time. And, and anyway, I said, oh, well, you know, really, we, it would be best if we did do that. And I thought, oh, we did do it, but I'd forgotten that at the start of it. I told them that it is a waste of time and money doing this. And when I, and... So I'd, I'd gone from telling him, 
it wasn't just that it was a problem and you wouldn't see it. It was that it was fine as it was. There was no need to do anything. Ain't broken down fixed. Yeah, it's it's not broken. It's working fine. It'll be fine like that. If we'd done it a different way, you know, that would have been better. But this, honestly, there is no there is no need whatsoever to to spend any of the taxpayer money on on changing this. And they just wanted it for their little whatevers. And anyway, and so I told him when he, and I was spending so much time on this because it was, it was an amazing moment in my life. I'd just never ever seen this happen before. And I've only come across it once since. Um, is, is I was feeling so good about this job and, and about myself at this job. And he said, was it worth it? And suddenly, thought back and realized, oh my god, no. I told them it was a waste of time. Don't, it doesn't need to be done. And I said, no, it wasn't worth it. It was actually a complete waste of time. And not only did I say that, but I also realized, you know, that is actually pretty much the story of everything I've been doing there. I've been paid well. And everything I've been doing has been, almost everything I've been doing is a colossal waste of time. Because I was brought in to do a tiny job, yep. which should have been really small, spun out to, I think, more than six months. And, and a lot of the time, we were just there, you know, um, well, you know, really wasting time, you know, just doing, just, just being there for, because it suited one person or another. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, wow, I've been wasting my time. I just had this realization that I've been, in a, I've been living under an illusion. I've been wasting my time. I mean, I've got to quit this job. I've got to quit this job. It's a waste of time. And he had asked two innocuous questions about my work. And in the space of, you know, less than two minutes, way less than two minutes, Maybe one less than one minute. I'd gone from being really happy with my job to yeah. I got to quit. Yeah. What a waste, <laughs> man! I'm wasting my life there. I got to quit. And 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 that second question was didn't make any sense. And to me, this was the clear sign that this this was no ordinary person. And he. He, I don't know, this, this was what you call a wise man, a wise person, and, um, and, and I was really, really grateful for meeting him. And it just showed me, this, the whole conversation that afternoon showed me how little I knew, how little I knew, because I was even disagreeing with some of the things he said, and later I remember finding out some things like, I don't even know, you know, just, just some of the things that I would thought or I'd assumed about life. Mm. We were just quite, we just quite in, incorrect, and I mean, I, I sort of, I just questioned him on certain things. I, I argued with him, but, but I just realised that man, that guy is onto something that, that, um, you know, that I, I'm just amazed about, and you know, he's talking about things that I know nothing about and skills that I would love to have, and I remember also that he asked me. We, well, I think we were in his garage by this stage, and, and he, we made sure we were way away from anyone else. Mm -hmm. And he asked me what I, re what I really wanted. And, um, and I assumed he meant what I really wanted for coming up there to see him. And, but I don't really know in retrospect. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I, I suspect it might have been something wi wider. And was it his personal power or what? But the actual reason I, I went up there, which was more of a health issue, that, that was what I was really focused on, was suddenly far from my mind. And what I said to him was, I really want to help people. <laughs> and it was funny because like, the whole reason for, for going there sort of was suddenly gone. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was like something from my heart came out. And I said, I really want to help people. And... Um, and and he didn't say anything, and he just sort of you know he would just was said nothing for a for a wee while, and then we went on to something else, and and um, you know it's it's like you know it was like it, it was seemed like it didn't go anywhere, but it's and and I really had the feeling that he did something to help me, 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting the way metaphysicians do work like that. Is they their conversation and their whole work is for you to have light bulb moments, for you to click yeah, things yeah. together. So, well, so all all they're doing is setting you up for that yeah. for that healing or that understand like, for you to do yeah. the work because because yeah. you know you can't actually heal another person. It's it's all about them doing the work. That's right. That's right. And but I I really think that he turns some dials and levers that he did something because within I think the next couple of months I had discovered um, just at the same you know now that I'd resolved to quit my job and you know and go you know get take a break from all this you know crap that I've been doing yeah you know, because I'd, I'd really been collecting collecting the money and and just my interest in really doing a j- good job had been whittled down by I guess my lack of um, it wasn't lack of integrity, but just feeling that there's a lack of choice in, in what I was doing, and, and not realizing that I had a bit more, that I've infinitely more control if I'd, if I'd known how to exert that. But um, I really feel he'd changed something because within a short space of time after I saw him, I discovered, like I said, these um, this mantras, and then the Hindu Hinduism, the philosophy, and and all these amazing ideas that blew my mind. And I can't help feeling that there was some connection between him and, and discovering this stuff. Because I thought, I really want to know how he does what he does. And he, he, would o- he only said to me that, um, he said the main thing he tells his, uh, his students is, he said, the main thing he tells them is that you have to know that what you're doing has been done. You have to you have to really know that what you're doing is being done. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, oh, so is that really the main thing that you tell them? I mean, I kind of get it, but surely there's there's a whole lot of tricks and tips and <laughs> techniques and things like that. And he didn't want to go into that, but he he wanted to say that that was a very important thing. And I remember do, learning some techniques and things much later, and finding that that was actually really um, that was dynamite because there were some things that you'd do and you'd think, oh, I'm not re- I'm really not sure how this is going to work out. I don't think I've got what it takes to you know do this particular thing that I'm you know trying to do this afternoon. And but just you know, and, and that I've got some technique or other, and I'm just wanting to achieve a certain result, and just what he said really came to the fore, because you could go out, you could go in there with a whole lot of doubt, and a whole lot of worry, and everything like that, and just actually having a certain amount of faith in what you're doing really uh, was really, really, really valuable. And, and, and you know that that can be in anything that you do. It's just just having the faith while you're doing it, and see how it turns out later. And and, and not everything's going to be successful necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't all make perfect sense while you're doing it, but it's no, it's again that feeling that you're following. It's it's just you know if you're going to bring in a whole lot of um, a whole pile of worry and or, or just a whole lot of doubt, um, self doubt, etc. You know that's going to kill things early on. And and I noticed that for me in particular. It was um, self-doubt or doubt that certain things that even I I wanted to give a go, but I'd just have too much lack of faith, so I'd ditch them before even giving them a go. Mm. And, and I think maybe that was one of the reasons that he had uh, mentioned the, these things to me because you know I, I feel I have changed a bit yeah. um, since then to, to put them into practice. Well, all the dots are definitely connected. There's no doubt about that. Mm. And when you look back in hindsight, you can kind of... You, you can you can see the path of development and, and, and yeah. why it all happened the way it did, which made no sense at the time. And and if you judged it for what it was, you you know, you'd probably be like, This doesn't you know, this doesn't make sense, but it made perfect sense well, that's, in the progression. Well that's one of the things that I feel is um is, is really is really worthwhile later is is when um especially if you can um learn how if people can learn how to see see things more clearly and, and, and have a kind of framework for how life works. Um, to me, the idea that, you know, just bad, you know, stuff randomly happens is, is a terrible philosophy. It's, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's terrible in that it, 
makes bad luck or anything just, like that. It's yeah. just a it's a, just a, a philosophy of powerlessness. It's just yeah, that disempowering. Isn't yeah, it? it's just that that you know stuff random stuff happens. You've got no control over it. You know it doesn't matter what you do. Just stuff's going to happen, and and you know so what's the point so ultimately what's the point in you know doing this that or the other yeah uh, it brings a real helplessness or what's the point in anything that type of philosophy yeah so or, or why don't or, or why don't i do this because you know just you know it's not as if you know it's not as if there's some you know old guy with a white beard looking over you know looking down from some cloud who's gonna clobber me um you know for you know, if nobody else see, and this is another dangerous one, is if nobody else sees it, you know, maybe it's okay. Yeah, you gotta have that that, that self discernment. You know, yeah, it's, it's not about someone external of yourself yeah. judging you. It's about you making decisions that benefit or that align you with the person you want to be. Yeah, exactly, and, and with with what what you want to create yes. ahead of you with all the energy and the actions and the thoughts and, and whatever's in your personality that you're busy, you know, being and, and becoming. And, you know, if we, want to, if we want wonderful things to come into our lives, we've got to do the things that match that. And, you know, and, and, you know this is one of the things that, you know, I've, I've seen much, much, much more clearly since I, um, you know, got more onto this particular path that, everything reflects and um, and that you know if and, and that you notice it if you look at the people who come into your life and the things that happen to you and look at well, how has life been what have I been doing in this last few days this last week this last month uh, but especially you know whenever any, anything wonderful happens to you I always look now what have I been doing because that is not a coincidence. No. There are no coincidences. That, that's what I love about the movie V for Vendera. <laughs> you know, there are no coincidences. What, what is it? There, there are no coincidences, only the illusion thereof. Oh, you know, yes. you know it's, it might, it'll seem like it, but nothing's random. Nothing happens by chance. And look at, your, you look at your life. Plot it out as a graph. If anything really way out happens, way out wonderful or bad, Look and just see what does that correlate with? Because man, that's correlating with something. Now, how have I brought that in? And you can learn so much from doing that. Because you know, with some of the biggest regrets in my life is when I've had, um, you know, like little regrets, uh, is when I've had an incredible day where something really amazing's happened, and I just didn't realise this at the time, and I should have said, man. What did I do in the last 24 hours for this that, that, that really matched this? Because something has happened, or what's been happening to bring this in, but definitely something in the last day or so. Yeah. And, and I've seen this again and again where, you know, something bizarre has happened. Like, and like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a really good example. Is, uh, one time when I came back from, um, and there's, there's the bee, which is a wonderful sign. Um, one, one time I came, I'd come back from India and I was really dead set on being vegetarian. I thought, yep. I'm going to be vegetarian now. And I was actually making life, you know, a little bit uncomfortable for Leah um, and my new wonderful partner um, by insisting, look, darling, no, no, I'm vegetarian, 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 vegetarian. And I really do think vegetarian is a great way to go. Um, but I think I was just a bit too hard but too dogmatic with it and yeah. anyway I, I and and but I, I just thought look I'm gonna have some real willpower with this and, and I, this is the way I want, want things to be and anyway I remember we got invited out somewhere and uh, to some lunch and there's all these meat dishes and everything like that and all these lovely people who had invited us there and I just thought oh my goodness now look I'm really hungry I don't want to just say look, I can't eat any of this and I really don't want to be that kind of vegetarian who says, ah, oh, there's meat here. Come on, darling, we've got to get out of here. Or, <laughs> oh, there's no way I'm touching that dead, dead animal flesh. You know, <laughs> just, you, do, you don't want to, you don't want to be mean with it. And I thought, these are such nice people. And they've taken the time to do this. And they've invited us here. I, I just want to, I just want to be kind to them. You know, and what's the most loving thing to do? So I ate their food. Anyway, and I and I had some mixed feelings about it, 
Uh, but I felt, look, this is the right thing. I, I felt this really, of all the things I, could, I can think of doing right now, this is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's, it's, um, it's the kindest thing to them and um, it's the kindest thing to my tummy. <laughs> And, and if, I, yeah. if I don't eat it, it's not kind to them. It's, to me, it's the kindest thing to do, so, so I ate the meat. Anyway, and, and ate everything that was there, and, it was, and I've got to say, it was really nice food. And anyway, wake up the next morning, and wow, what was that dream? And I had a dream of this great Indian guru himself. I never met him, but it's his, it's his teachings that I've been really been studying for all uh, but you know i'd been studying for i can't remember how how long at that point but anyway i decided that this guy was my guru even though he'd passed on he's got all these books and videos and everything like that i decided i decided he's my guru uh, he's he's just such, just seemed like such a nice guy and, and you know even listening to some of his lectures you know it's, it's hard not to get emotional just because this he's such I don't know. There's something, something in it, something undefinable. Always, of course, and um, but but he seemed like such a kind and loving and wise person. And um, anyway, the next morning I woke up and I'd had this amazing dream about him. And he had, uh, if I rem yeah, I think I remember rightly, it was a dream where he's giving a satsang, a a, a, a lecture on on spiritual topics, and he mentioned. He was quite curious. He mentioned one particular mantra, and um, I didn't even recognize it as, as particular as a mantra at the time. And um, and he said, said, does anyone does anyone know about this? And I put my hand up, and, and he looked at me and, and said yes. And um, and I told and I told him what I knew about it, and um, and and I remember feeling so emotional, overwhelmed with emotion, um, uh, talking to him, and, and I think he said, that's right, and he said, and he leant over towards me, he said, it's very, he said you know, that that particular, um, that partic uh, particular practice along those lines, I won't say his exact words, but he said, is very good, good for you, and, and I woke up and I thought, whoa, that's the most Way out dream I just 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 remember so overwhelmed with emotion and talking to him with the tears rolling down my face. I'm actually feeling quite emotional now just talking about it. And I and I thought, wow, what a dream. My goodness. And I thought Wow, I wonder why I had that dream, you know, because I don't didn't do anything particularly I haven't been doing any particularly amazing practices recently. And oh my God, I ate meat yesterday. <laughs> you know, just yeah. thinking of you know what you've done. Yeah. And and I thought, oh my goodness, this doesn't make any sense. I ate meat, and I've had this wonderful dream of, of the guru and such a blessing. And I realised that while vegetarian was quite good, and he even he he didn't make much of a big deal about it. he. As far as I'm aware, in any of his lectures and books, he didn't, he didn't really stress it. He mentioned it with some quite esoteric practices that he said you really needed to be vegetarian, celibate, blah, 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 if you're going to do this practice, you know, um, because I think that they were quite difficult practices to keep your mind straight while you're doing. But, um, but otherwise, he would seldom mention that. And I think it's not that he didn't see vegetarianism as unimportant. But I think he didn't see it as a critical thing that you needed to, you know, make that, yeah, that get very invested into that emotionally, and 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 the politics of that could override. Yeah, that it some, should should be the, something necessarily that that you would do highly dogmatically, and maybe maybe you know cause difficulties to others over, mm. and, and maybe he that he. In his situation, this is something that you could easily achieve and people could easily understand, and my situation was different. And um, anyway, and I learned a big lesson there, that when you put, all, that whatever we, we, whatever we do, we need to put love at the top yeah. and any other considerations further down.
Mm -hmm. and, and you realize, you know, when we're doing a lot of things in life, do we always do that? And, and often it's easy, and then suddenly this way out situation, to suddenly snap back to a mode of thinking that, you know, is a no, is, was a normal one for us for years and years, and it's actually a challenge, can be a challenge to think, but just a sec, what's the kindest thing to do here? I know that blah, 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 I might be out of pocket, or blah, 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 or people, nobody in their right mind would do this, but, you know, forget about what the normal person would do. What's well, actually the most loving thing to do, and actually, wow, that's a... You know, that's a hell of a practice if we go through life doing it, because suddenly, you know, you know, I think, you know, the ego, you know, or, or just some of the, when, when I talk about the ego, and when they talk about the ego in Hinduism, it's really the, at the problems in our personality, all the obstacles in our personality. It's, it, it's not that we hate ourselves or something like that, or, you know, or wanting to, you know, not be ourselves. It's just a lot of the things that define us are actually some of our limitations mm. and you know like the fact that I really like this and I don't like that so an opportunity comes up you know where this is the right thing to do but I might have to miss out on the thing that I really like and I might have to do some of the thing that I really dislike chances are in the past I would have just gone for well thought well forget that I know this you know, I don't know what's the best thing, but this is probably the best thing because this is the one that I like the most. You know, that actually if you're, um, if you're really on the path to a higher place, to a real, um, de real development of consciousness, and this isn't just in a spiritual way, this is actually becoming a better person around, a more effective mm -hmm. manager, say, a more effective businessman, is that you'll think, what's the right thing to do in this situation? What's yes. the best thing to do in this situation? Not... What would I prefer to do? Oh, <laughs> actually, this this what involves the this this involves another trip to um, you know to Orla you know Orlando, Florida. So you know that why don't I try and do that way? You know, maybe do some more sales rather than something else. See, and that, that's the thing is, I find that you know what people could um, segregate to just you know the spiritual part of their life, and then you know snap back into another mode. At work, what I find is it's really, if you're really keen, it's, it's unrealistic, it's, it's, it's um, ridiculous to do that because it, it's all in entirety. What works well for your meditation practice or anything like that or, or your home life, you know, is going to work really well at work or, you know, with, with, with anything. Um, um, and um, this is this is a really key thing to see is that uh, you know is, is actually developing our integrity um, developing our willpower developing your discernment um, you know and um, your resilience your perseverance you know is your decision your decisions should never be based on but I don't like spending time with that person you know there oh they're such they're just so difficult to deal with you know like obviously i'll prefer doing anything else you know so if the right thing to do is you know involves going to see them you know it really brings you to a higher place if you think oh well look what is the right thing to do oh well i better run it past them and actually if i have a problem with with dealing with them is there a way that i can make it easier to do that because certainly one of the one of the main things I noticed when, you know, when I was at this job at ACC was I was working under a manager that I found really difficult to, to deal with. You know, I, I found him really, really difficult. And, and I thought at that time that I could deal with any, anyone, that anyone, nobody would be a problem. I thought I was really good in way, you know, watch out what you say, you know, because the ne next, you know, next lesson could be, you know, any, anywhere harder than that. And, um, and I remember getting a strong feeling during the year that, you know, why? Because I, I was becoming more spiritual in my outlook and everything, getting more into meditation, reading more interesting books. I thought, why am I at this job? You know, what's holding me here? You know, because I wanted to leave and I noticed that I seemed to need to be there and all the signs were that, you know, I should be there, even when I was, you know, really climbing the walls trying to get out. And, and, I, and I thought, I think, 
My problem is that I need to learn to get on with this guy because I noticed when I and I yeah. noticed up after I had that thought that I watched other people and they could deal with them fine, and and I thought well I so the problem's actually with me. It's not so much with him. It's just that I react so strongly, you know, like yeah. I feel that he's quite combative. But I immediately become overly defensive whenever we're talking. Yeah, so, bring it back to the eye, eh? What yeah, yeah. I and, and so it all comes back to me. It all can, and, and, and I've noticed this only more and more strongly that any situation we're in in life, you know, which we find really difficult, you know, a really good question to ask there is, you know, is, you know, is any of this my doing or is there something in me that is really, um, has really one brought the situation in, or is there something in me that needs to change or grow to to let this, you know, let the situation move on, um, and and as soon as I realised that and started looking for ways to um, to communicate with him, which where I wouldn't bring up my defensiveness and, 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 and it's anything to even cope, I would say. You first, in a difficult situation, a situation you find difficult to deal with, um, really stressful to me, and I, I noticed it very keenly at the time was, if you can cope, that's something. Man, yeah, it's a yeah. step in the yeah, right direction, yeah, yeah, man, it's if, a success. Yeah, you don't need to master it first if you're not coping. Just to cope is fantastic, you know. If you find a way to cope, that's brilliant. So, so what I look for is a way to at least cope. And and what I found was that it was actually looking at his expression, because he was one of these people whose expression looked completely different from, I think, how he really meant to come across. And you know, he looked like he was looking daggers at you. And um, and whereas actually, if you just listen to what he said and re replied to it. Yeah, everything was fine. So what I did was, I just started just looking, looking down to the side while he was talking to me, and I would just answer to what he said because the vibe was at a instinctual level was he was about to attack you, <laughs> you know, and and you know I realised pretty soon well he hadn't attacked anyone in the office yet, and and so look why don't why don't I just stop getting so um, defensive, and. Um, and, and once I started dealing with him like that, I noticed that pr very quickly. And this is the magic of changing something in yourself and learning a lesson in life. And, and actually being open to doing that. You know, because even being open to m making the change and, and actually implementing it, something that you've never implemented before and stepping up where you've never stepped up before, that's a change. Because You've made that change, things are going to change. You've made it. that change, things are going to change. And what happened shortly afterwards was, suddenly he's no longer my boss. You learned the lesson. And I you, learned and the you, lesson. And you moved on. You. And, and stuff changed. And, and suddenly dynamics that have been stuck at that office for, for ages mm. changed. And... Um, and in and, and the most way out, in an interesting way, which I won't, I won't go into, but it was, it was fun. And suddenly my job was running out and, you know, I was going to be transferred to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. was it telecom idea? I can't remember what. And I said, guys, no, I need a break. And I, and I, I'm, I'm off, I'm going to do some traveling or something. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, and it was amazing. And it actually... You know, and this this was the magic of that. It was it wasn't that that I just got out of that situation, but a situation where this office had really been a very with this part of the office because it was a big office. You know, where people had been, you know, dealing with a, ma a manager that they found so difficult to deal with. He he had been pulled out of that position, and um, you know, b based on my recommendation, which somebody had finally listened to, and nobody had listened to this for years. But it, w it was the power of change, the power of doing something different and wanting to improve yourself. Not only does it change things for you, 
but it can actually make a wonderful you realize that, that that this can really go out and change so many other people it is yeah absolutely and and, and the kind of the mystics approach to that is is that anything that you're you're finding discomfort in is some is, is a quality in yourself yes, that's yes. going to continue to present itself in, until you you release it in your own mm. life until you you, you find learn will learn the lesson essentially you know? yeah. and it'll just keep on coming back in one way shape or form you'll keep on putting the same characters coming yeah. in your life well, exactly and and I'd say that you know potentially you know thinking a bit further on, on what you're saying now that. Um, Maybe I had been overly defensive in other situations which I hadn't picked up on, mm. and maybe I, I would have been since then. And maybe, um, you know, that was the start of learning to be, you know, just a bit more calm and listening to people. And, um, and I wouldn't say, I still wouldn't say I've absolutely mastered that one, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's, it's a real skill, and even in the family life, it's just any way that we can change our personality for the better, either by choice, by choosing a different way to, um, to interact with people, to not, you know, bite or get aggressive or get angry or, uh, or, or be arg argumentative, with, you know, but just you know the people we look up to. You know they're cool, calm, and collective. They're they're um, good humoured. They they, um, they don't they don't get stressed out easily. And we we all I, I would I would say it, it, it's fairly um, fair to say that we all want to be like them. These easygoing people who you know drift into such situations, say reasonable things. You know, and and you know I don't know if ev everybody is like that. I mean cer certainly you know I I still got a way to go to, to be like one of those people but you know you s I think it's being aware of it is one w aware of what you like what you'd like to improve you know actually ask uh, asking for you know asking yourself um, your great self um, for, um, for you know for ways to, to change that and, um, and and looking to be a better person, just having the will to be a better mm. person, yeah, it's such yeah. an important thing. And in terms of that, that mental stillness and not being affected by anything, it's it's just yes. about not investing any mm. of your any of your emotions into the outcome mm. of the situation in terms of mm. another person's role in it, because you yes. can't control others, and to and to try to control them is 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 of a fear-based kind yep. of excursion. So. When you kind of walk into a situation and you, and you actually don't, you're not actually too bothered about how the other people react, and you know that you can walk away without having any judgments or being, you know, you, a part of you hasn't isn't invested in that person. That then you can just walk away, and you're free, and it's yeah, there's, easy breezy. There's, there's another angle too, and I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, um, is is that if you go and and I, because I've noticed this one with myself. Yeah. If you have a particular set expectation that you're going to go in and you're going to get them to agree with this or blah blah blah, mm -hmm. that this is fatal. That 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 actually we it's great to have a plan, and we shouldn't um, uh, be you know feel um, uh, irritated or anything like that if. You know, whatever we had in mind, you know, isn't going to fit in with everything else. Yeah, well, that's the ego. That's that controlling it's, thing, and it's like you it? can't really yeah. control everything. All you can control is your experience in the situation, like how how you perceive it is is controllable mm. within yourself. So it's yeah, and and just very empowering. You know, like there's um, well, and this this is a much I guess you know, one of, one of the higher things is actually just the idea of surrender. Is that you know you're doing the best. You can, and a lot of these challenging situations are at work, or you know, maybe, maybe, maybe at home with, with different things. You know, it's it's, it's all organizing, often organizing things, um, but is just to surrender. I mean, th this is why, you know, to me, the the key thing is, if we have, you know, enough really wonderful energy, you know, in our personality, and if we if we can access it somehow, you know, either through I mean, it does, doesn't matter what we're doing. We're, we're doing some contemplative prayer, that's a very Christian thing. If, if we're doing you know, any religious practice which, which has this, if we're doing any you know, philosophical practice which has the same effect, um, anything that keeps our energy really good, it'll 
one, it'll help you know avoid these situations, and it'll make make them a lot easier to resolve. Um, you know, the the um, the more we find that we you know we turn up to places with um, you know um, run down, um, we're already feeling at the end of our tether. Exactly, you know this sort of thing. You know everything's infinitely harder to work on, and, and that's where you know just some sort of practice or other, and I would even say, you know, regular exercise, you know, that a lot of people in the spiritual sphere seem to underestimate how important that is. So true. So to true. keep your energies good. Because to me, my humor is, uh, you know, is a lot higher when I'm, you know, really fit, yeah. um, you know, doing, doing enough of my running and, and, and a few other bits and pieces, you know, that that's a bare minimum. Yeah, so yeah, so when we're talking spirituality, it's it's mm. we should never neglect the, the mind and the body because mm. they're all in, interconnected. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's including the body in there, and, and that, yeah. and actually, as the um, as the guru says, um, you know, we've got to look after the body. The the body is this wonderful vehicle that um, is going to take us all the way to enlightenment. So we better look after. It. That's true. All right. Now, um, it's been a beautiful talk. I like to summarize it, take it back to the chanting and, and, yes. and that sound resonancy for one second, just because I've got a beautiful cat in the presence here. And I've actually um, just, just wandered off that second. But, but cats, I've also heard that their, their purring resonates at specific frequency of the heart chakra. And, and, and cats are amazing mm. chanters or, or like... Mm. They're working in this sound resonancy healing and bumblebees as well, which are like really like fertility spirits <laughs> in a way, you know. They're, they're so, to me, they're so auspicious, and they even turn up in, in the Hindu um, iconography as well. They do, they're, do they're they? Not very much, yeah, yeah. So they and they're they're very powerful beings mm. as well, and in terms and they they're buzzing with energy, mm. and I I just like to to kind of philosophize on the concept of chanting whether the body is an instrument you know we're, we're talking about the body now and every one of our cells interacts when you when you make noise that sound resonancy flows through your body so the concept of chanting is really interesting when you look at harmonics and cymatics and how sand particles arrange themselves in specific geometric mm. constellations when certain frequencies go through them so I'm sure a lot of the words and the sounds that you're using are actually altering your genetic and cellular state as, as well as, you know, to, to bring it down to a scientific basis that, that it's metaphysical and it's actually altering the state of your body. Yes, yeah, look, I, I totally agree and that was, that was one of the interesting things that I noticed um, was that um, when, when you're chanting a mantra and, and um, and usually, I think for most people, when they're beginning, it's going to be out loud. That yeah. um, you could find that you would feel your body changing, and that the alignment of certain things was changing, especially in the spine, uh, the neck, um, uh, base of the spine. Things would change, just like I said with mm. that with that finance venture. Just the way you're sitting, everything's changed. The body, I don't think, can be separated from the energy fields around them. I, I think they're all really a bit of a continuum mm, um, that, that um, anyone who's able to see all the energies there will see the changes that are starting to manifest infinitely quicker than, obviously, at the physical level. Yeah. One thing I, I have noticed is that, you know, especially when you're doing... Um, more in, intense chanting, and it doesn't, I would, I'd stress this, it does not need to be out loud um, because, you know, um, uh, well, that's just through experience, through, through what's said, and, and, and um, it, it is amazing that you do find even bones in your head and, and different things inside your head, you notice that they are changing their alignment, that, that some things are pushing out, other things are coming up. Um, I, I suspect that there is a um, that there is a lot of stuff in the body as far as alignment that we still have no idea of. Um, that, that certain things 
um, when we get stressed, that they become tight, that they'll pull on other mm. things and, and our alignment will go out. When our alignment goes out, the energy will be um, progressively more and more blocked. And it's when the energy is really humming along, we'll notice that we'll stand differently, we'll sit differently, um, and everything's working much better. We'll, we'll smile better. Um, and, and you can see it. You can see it when you do these practices.